Good morning everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'd like to talk about how we can use some simple VBA to convert image formats. Um, this can be really efficient way of optimizing images, reducing the size of images and so they don't take up as much room on your hard drive, in your database, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to be exploring today one technique, um, the one that we can use built into uh, Office uh, Windows, which is WIA. Now, of course, I do have an old article on the subject, and all the code, everything you need to know is here. And then um, a couple examples. What you need to know with this technique is that we are still limited to a certain extent. So we can, as you can see here, based on the enum, we can work with PMPs, GIF, JPEGs, PNGs, and TIFF files, and that is it. So if you've got some other newer formats or uh, you want to take a PDF and convert, WIA won't work for that. Um, and we can briefly touch upon what alternatives you could use. And the one that pops into my head right off the bat, one of the best tools that I've had for decades for image, uh, whether it be viewing or manipulation, so transferring, um, would be using something like Irfan View. Um, and the beauty with such a tool is you can, using the shell, uh, run commands to convert images if you have other formats that you need to work with. Getting back to the subject, however, WIA baked into Office, baked into Windows, it already offers, for me at least, what I need 99% of the time. BMP, GIF, JPEG, PNG, those are the ones we see. Everything else, in my case, in my experience, is a rarity. So in most cases, this simple code is all I need. So let's let's dive in. Let's take a look at how this works. So um, what I do normally is I click here, get the source code, copy it from my website, and then we're going to go into, this is just a blank database. And we'll enable the contents and VBA works. We'll go into the VBA editor. We'll insert a new standard module. And I will, as simple as that, copy paste the code. Now, you can do whatever you'd like, name it however you like. It does make sense and it pays off in the long run to give them names that make sense and you can find yourself at a later point in time. This is basically what I do. Always a good idea. Go and make sure that everything compiles so you know everything's good. Now, one thing with my code, you'll notice in this instance, everything has been declared as an object. And then we're using the create object, create object, which means I am using a late binding. So we don't have to mess around with tools, references, and go find the proper references. It will all be taken care of for us at runtime. So another beauty here, but I did give the declarations here, should you ever want to make it early binding. Next, you can review the code if you want, but it's really simple. You're giving it your initial image, so a name, file name, path, etc., and the output. So where do you want it saved and under what name? The format. Which format do you want it saved as? Obviously, the initial image has a format, but this format is what is the output format you're looking for. So I want to take a JPEG and I want to change it over to, and in this case, you could BMP, a PNG, whatever the case may be. And then you have quality, the quality of the image. You can actually degrade the image quality if you want to reduce the file size. Or you can say, no, leave it at 100%. Uh, I have it here set as optional at 85. That's what I needed for my needs, so I've just left it like that in the code example. And then you'll see here the way it works. Based on the format that you tell you want the output, we have to provide a certain GUID, which is used uh, down here in the format filter. Um, and basically you come down here and it just makes sure that the quality doesn't exceed 100 because it's not possible. We declare an image file and an image process to apply filters. And then we come here, what are we doing? Well, we're gonna take our image, we're gonna create a filter to convert it over to the format we want and with the quality we want. 
Then basically we load the image. We apply to the image the filters that we defined above. And lastly, we take this new image and we perform a save. And we save it to the output image as was specified with the extension. And this will actually make sure the extension matches what you selected as a format. Um, I had the experience where someone was using this and they were wanting to convert it over to BMP, but they were still keeping the original JPEG extension. And then it was making hooey screwy when they'd be reviewing their files saying it wasn't working, in it, but it was. So to avoid that whole issue, I now parse the output image file name and path, and I make sure the extension is the proper extension. And that's it. That's literally how easy, how hard this is, which is very easy. If you look here, I have the usage example. <clears throat> this is all you have to do. You call the function, you supply it an initial image, you supply it where you want the change, the converted image saved to and under the file name. And then you tell it under what format, in what resolution, what quality you want. So let's perform a concrete example, easiest way to learn. And to do so, what I have set up here on my desktop, if we come back to my desktop, and I have the same folder as I've used in previous videos with sample images, originals, and updated images. So in the originals, I have three images, a GIF, JPEG, and a PNG. And updated right now is empty. So if we come in here, and just to simplify our lives, what we can do, let's do two things. First of all, let's shift this over and let's shift this over and let's make things even a little better. Something like that should suffice our needs. So how does this work? Well, as the example shows you here, we're going to perform and I'm going to change this because as you can see, the, this is a function that returns a Boolean if it's successful or not. So instead of a plain call, I'm actually going to do a question mark. So debugs and prints out the output for me. So you'll see why in a second. And here we'll just take the first one that I see, kid.jpg. And then we're going to say where we want it saved. Well, we're going to take that. We're going to, instead of being an or originals, so we're going to put an updated. And let's convert this over for fun to a BMP. And then the next step is to specify yes as a BMP. And the quality, we're going to say 100%. And we're going to run it. So we just press enter. And as you can say, it's, it says that it worked properly. So let's back out one and go and check updated. And there is my BMP. Now, to show you something, let's now come here and let's change the quality to 50 and press enter. And as you can see, I got an error because that file exists. And this function currently, the way it's designed, doesn't allow for overwriting. I did that on purpose to avoid problems. So what we can do, and I probably should have done the first one, we'll just call it kid underscore 50. And there you go, true this time, as you saw. And if we go into details, you'll see that quality has no impact on a BMP, which is true because there's no compression on a BMP. So let's try it now a different one. Let's take our, I don't know, barcode, our barcode GIF. Good. So we're going to start with an original image of barcode gift. And now let's come here and let's do a barcode gift at 100. But we're going to make it a JPEG this time. And a JPEG and a JPEG at 100. And we press enter. Okay. Next, we're going to come back up. We're going to perform the exact same operation, but this time we're going to do it at 50% quality. And there we go. So now let's back out and go back into updated. 
let us extend this a little bit. And here is the result for a JPEG. And as you can see, the JPEG 100 is at 82 kilobytes versus a JPEG at 50 is 29 kilobytes. So as you can see, the quality parameter definitely has an impact when we're working with JPEGs, but not with BMPs, and that is expected. Um, and if you look at the images, you'll see the quality when you start going down in quality too much will degrade. Now, in some images, it's really negligent. You don't really notice it. In other ones, it will be dramatic. And that's why the quality you use will depend on what you're doing and the amount of information in your images, how much uh, resolution you got to keep, how sharp and crisp you need the definition of the image to be. Just for fun, let's, let's really push our luck. And let's push it down to 10% quality. And we should see a degradation on this one. And you can see the lettering, the finition of the, the border, it's really starting to degrade. And you see, look here, you, the, the reading, the numbers and things like that. So it does impact the quality of the image, hence why it's called quality, but it can also have a drastic impact on the image. And personally, if we looked at the barcode 150, the change visually was minor, but the change in file size was huge. So going from, let's round it up, I know a little bit here, but let's round it to 90 down to 30, that's huge, two thirds, 66% decrease. Um, and if you're doing that on hundreds, thousands of image, that can have a huge impact on storage, load speeds, etc. And this is what you wanna do when you're working with web, you always wanna optimize your images. And this is actually a technique I use for optimizing my images. So. That is literally all there is to know about it. Um, it really is straightforward. As you saw, the parameters are straightforward. Your initial image, your output image, where you want it saved, the format you want it converted over to, and then the quality. Now, the quality depends on the format you choose. It doesn't always apply, but it will work in the instances that the format supports compression. And that's it, guys. So I hope you've learned something. I hope this can be useful to some of you out there. As you can see, a single line command now that you can use to convert the common formats, BMP, GIFs, JPEGs, PNGs, and TIFFs from one format to another. Thank you for spending a couple of minutes of your day with me. And I hope to see you in my next video. Take care. As always, you know, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Share with your friends, family, and uh, networks. Anything you can do to help promote my channel is greatly appreciated, and it's the greatest compliment you can give to me. Thank you. Have a great day, guys.